Well, if that was a measuring stick game, the Broncos fell well short of expectations. 23-7 to the final. The Ravens hand the Broncos their first loss of the season. And now some questions at the quarterback position. Hello and thank you for joining us for the Broncos postgame show. Welcome into the Pat Bowen Fieldhouse. I am Phil Milani, joined by my co-host, former Broncos linebacker Todd Davis. Todd, that was tough to watch. Yeah, that was tough uh, for many reasons. Um, that was definitely a game I felt like we could win, um, but then we had so many injuries that contributed to that loss. Yeah, a lot of injuries, a lot of physicality in this one. You knew facing that Ravens team, it was going to be tough out there. A lot to get to uh, in this game, but let's start with some of the highlights. Things were looking pretty good there in the first half. At the end of the first quarter, the bowling ball, Javante Williams. He does not skip leg day, Todd. As a linebacker, you hate to see that, huh? Yeah, this is some grown man running. Uh, you got to bring some power when you come to tackle this man. Because um, many times in this game, he said, get off me, little boy. You're just not strong enough. <laughs> yeah, he took a couple of defenders for rides there. A few plays later, Teddy Bridgewater, three-yard touchdown to Noah Fant. The Broncos up 7 nothing. But then, Todd, things started to change a little bit. The Ravens scored touchdowns on back-to-back -back drives. Latavius Murray and then Hollywood Brown on the bomb. This defense just didn't look like the defense we saw last week. Yeah, that we just had some plays that weren't necessarily our brand of defense. Uh, we're not known for getting beat uh, deep in the passing game. That's just not who we are. So we have a couple things that we need to figure out in our back end and get figured out for the rest of the season because, as we know, this is a copycat league. And if you let it hurt you one week, the next week they're going to try to use that same play. And then right before halftime, you don't want to see this. Bridgewater takes a shot. Looks like it hit his helmet a little bit there. Suffered a concussion. So in comes Drew Locke, and uh, it did not go well for him there. Took a couple of sacks early. Uh, just a little bit seemed off uh, in that second half. Yeah, it was tough. Um, I know he came into the game and. At the time he came into the game, the offense was kind of already starting to move downhill. Um, so him coming in, I know it looks really bad on the outside looking in, um, but I know he came in and did you know, the best he really could with what he had in front of him. But um, Teddy is very, very important to the success of this team, and hopefully he can get back soon. And we mentioned the defense just didn't look sharp, some miscommunication there. And then even on the final play of the game, Todd, they try to get the 100 yards rushing, they get the NFL record, and uh, you said maybe the Broncos will remember this. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that's definitely a situation where you, you take a knee and you let the game end, but they chose to be a little bit greedy and go after that 100 yard rushing. Um, so if the Broncos see them again, they'll definitely remember that. 23 to seven, the final. Let's go out to Empower Field at Mile High and check in with our A team, Eric Dalala and Alexis Perry. Thanks so much, Phil. Eric, obviously not the outcome the Broncos were hoping for. There in the first quarter, we saw Javante Williams rip off that big 31-yard run, set up that Bridgewater defense touchdown, but then the Broncos didn't see the end zone again. What went wrong, especially starting in the second quarter? Yeah, well, you had to punt too many times. 11 punts on your first 12 drives. That's not going to get it done. Uh, 3 of 14 all day on third down. That's because you're in third and long over and over and over. It's not sustainable. You're not going to be able to make that work week after week. They kind of overcame, overcame it in previous weeks. Couldn't do that today against the Ravens. Kind of went away from the running game a little bit early maybe. And then, of course, when Teddy Bridgewater goes out, that's just too difficult to overcome, I think. Well, in an attempt to find a bright spot in this game, I think Caden Stearns was that guy. Two sacks on Lamar Jackson. What really clicked for him today? Well, I think you saw Vic Fangio use a lot of pressure to get to Lamar Jackson. They weren't able to get there with four guys, so Caden Stearns was one of the guys who got through. I thought the defense played pretty well, Alexis. Obviously, there are a couple big plays here and there. That deep one to Hollywood Brown, of course, gave the Ravens the lead for good. But for the most part, 23 points, you should be able to be in that game. The offense just couldn't do their part. What do the Broncos need to learn from this game and take into Pittsburgh next week? Well, I just think focusing on today, you've got to get better on third down, and you've got to figure out what's going on with your quarterback because Teddy Bridgewater can play better, and I think that today there was a sense, at least to me, that if he came back in, maybe there's a chance you can come back, make this a close game, but without Teddy Bridgewater, this team might struggle. Right, Eric, thank you so much for your time. Phil, let's send it back over to you. Thank you very much, guys, uh, here in studio with Todd Davis. Todd, the quarterback situation now, you know, they have the competition during training camp, and then Teddy comes out, plays so well these first three games, goes out with injury, uh, and the Broncos offense 
uh, really less than 200 yards of offense. Uh, take away some of that garbage time stuff at the end there. Just couldn't do anything today. Yeah, it was tough. Um, you know, Teddy came out and he played really good um, in the first half and was continuing with his pace. You know, no interceptions, continuing to lead our offense and make some big time throws. Um, and then him going out is tough for the entire team. Um, he's the leader of not only the offense, but the entire team. Um, his veteran leadership, uh, the way he carries himself, um, his knowledge of the game, it really helps our team win. Um, so with him out, that's a big loss for us. I know this might not quite be accurate, but it kind of felt like to me just watching the game that when Teddy's in there, you got confidence that you might be able to win the game. He goes out to injury, and it kind of felt like last year or the year before that just where things just – uh, like you said, the whole team felt the injury almost. Absolutely. Um, there was a true competition for quarterback this year in the training camp, and Teddy won that job. Um, so when he's out there, he feels like the starter. And when he went down and Drew had to come in, although Drew has a lot of starting experience, it feels like they are now missing their starter. And uh, the Ravens, a, a tremendous defense, but just five sacks coming into this game. They had five sacks today alone, and you really felt like the Broncos were missing their two offensive guards Dalton Reisner and Graham Glasgow. Yeah, those are two big bodies who know how to play guard very, very well. Um, I think they're two veteran players who we need on the team. Um, I think that they have just a presence that you can't really feel with a young player or a new player. Um, we definitely need them back and um, soon. Let's go out to the podium at Empower Field at Mile High. Fighting everything not to make an excuse, like you said, and I'm, I'm still not going to. Um, you know, I just I got to give them a chance to catch the ball. I'm um, sure there's, you know, not very many reps for me in a week when you're the backup, and that's what my job is. That's what I got to be good at right now, and um, I wasn't wasn't the best at it today. All right, let's talk about the other side of the ball here. Uh, this, this did not look like the same Broncos defense that posted the shutout against the Jets last week. We knew Lamar Jackson was this threat, especially running the ball. You know, uh, he, I think he was the fourth leading rusher in the entire NFL coming into this game. The Broncos minimized that, but he threw for a lot of yards. Absolutely. Um, he found ways to get his guys the ball downfield. I um, mean, you know, he's definitely not known for having 300-yard games, but he had one today. And I think that the recipe that they had was to really have nine guys stay in and block and let their Hollywood Brown and their other wide receivers kind of try their best to get open. And today they got open. Do you think it's just because Lamar poses such a threat, it changes the way you normally pay, play defense? And then on the back end, guys were wide open a lot of the times. Absolutely, because as a defensive lineman, um, you want to get after the quarterback, but you also don't want to use your best swim, swim move or your best spin move because if he gets out of the, out of the pocket through your gap, it's 100% your fault. So I think half the time you want him to stay in the pocket, but then that also poses the problem where you're not getting enough pressure on him to make him throw or get rid of the ball. As a defender, playing somebody like that, it just makes you always think about what you're doing. You're constantly wondering, okay, what's going to happen on this play? It, he really is maybe one of the more dangerous weapons in the NFL. Absolutely. He poses so many different problems for defenses. Um, he can run, he can throw. Um, and then when he's running the ball on offense, that's like having an extra player out there. Um, playing Tom Brady, you're playing, you know, 11 on 10 because he's not playing, running the ball. But when you play Lamar Jackson, he can run the ball and you have to account for him. Well, let's go out to the Broncos locker room and check in with Sidney Jones. I'm here with Javante Williams. Javante, obviously not the outcome you guys had hoped for. What did head coach Vic Fangio say to you guys in the locker room after the game? Um, really, he just told us they outplayed us and outcoached us. Um, we made a lot of mistakes, obviously, on the field. Um, we're just going to clean them up tomorrow and move on to Pittsburgh. Well, your 31-yard run set up Noah Fant's touchdown. Walk me through that play. You ran through so many defenders. Yeah, um, I think they was all going for the ball instead of trying to wrap me up. Um, you kind of can see it. If you look at the replay, he was, like, punching for the ball, and um, I just kept running. As an offense, how do you guys adapt when you lose a guy like Teddy Bridgewater? Um, yeah, Teddy a vet, um, very good, as you can see, the past three games. But um, when Drew come in, I mean, whoever the guy is, we're just going to rally around him and do what we got to do. Well, you guys are going to turn the page tomorrow, like you mentioned, and look towards Pittsburgh. What do you hope to take out of this game and, and really work on this week? Yeah, um, I hope it just shows that we can be beat at any time if we don't come out or ready to play at home, on the road, wherever it's at. Um, we just always got to lock in and be ready to um, beat our opponent. John, I appreciate your time. All right, thank you.
Thank you very much, Sydney. Uh, Todd, this was a very physical game. We saw a lot of players leave, not just Teddy Bridgewater, but uh, Deontay Spencer left the game. Uh, Pat Sertan, the second at the end of the game, uh, left, was ruled out there. Uh, this Broncos team is starting to get pretty banged up, already played this game without seven starters. Yeah, this is tough, um, and especially tough when you play a hard-nosed Raven team. Um, it started back with Ed Reed and Ray Lewis, and whenever you play the Ravens, you know it's going to be a tough physical game, and that's how it was today. Um, and unfortunately, we lost a couple players. But when that happens, you know, and, and things aren't going well on the scoreboard, it's tough to try and get back in the game, huh? Absolutely. When you start losing guys that you know are key to your success, it's hard to uh, stay in the game and fight to win. Um, you know, there's the saying, next man up, um, but sometimes when you lose a certain caliber of player, the next man just can't uh, be enough. And then next week, the Steelers come into town, another AFC North team. You know that one's going to be physical, too. Uh, let's go back out to the stadium and check in with Matt Boyer. Outside the Broncos locker room with Vaughn Miller. Vaughn, you guys start off the game, three quick punts, and they had back-to-back -back touchdowns. When did you feel like that momentum change, and how do you feel like that that momentum change happened for you guys? Uh, I wasn't really paying attention to the game. We were just trying to focus on our assignment. Uh, they got a unique team with a unique style, a very effective style. And uh, we just didn't do enough to win today, 100%. With Lamar, what was working for him in that, that Baltimore Ravens offense today? Uh, just about everything, you know. Um, you can't really, you know, rush up the field or you scramble. If you sit back there long enough, then you throw deep balls, and, you know, that's what happened to us today. You've been very complimentary of this roster. How do you guys turn the page now against the tough Pitts, uh, Pittsburgh Steelers test this week as a veteran guy in this locker room? What's your message? Yeah, we just got to respond. You know, um, whenever you get hit with adversity like this, you got to respond. People lose games. You know, it's not the end of the world. On um, the Jets and the, the the Giants won today versus two good teams. You know, um, we just got to keep on playing. Well, I appreciate the time. Yes, sir. I appreciate you. Thank you very much, Matt. Uh, a tough game here for the Broncos all around. Todd, the. The perspective maybe on this Broncos team is that 3-0, and but those teams coming into today were a combined 0-9. Uh, a lot of people saying, wait until the Broncos face a really good team, and then we'll find out what happens. And uh, I hate to say it, but 23-7, to the final score here today. Yeah, this was the Broncos' first big test, and unfortunately, uh, they came up a little bit short. Uh, but we have another three opportunities coming up next um, in the Steelers the Raiders, and the Browns to really show that we can compete with any team in the league. Um, I feel like if we can get Teddy back healthy and strong and kind of shore up our defense where we made some mistakes today, I think we can really do good. And Teddy obviously going into the concussion protocol. We'll have to see how he can uh, progress through that throughout the week. But, yeah, the, like you mentioned there, it doesn't get any easier for this Broncos team. And then now, how do you avoid letting doubt creep into that locker room? Well, it's still early. Uh, you know, you got to let everybody know that we have a long season to play. Uh, we're still th three and one. We're sitting really well uh, to be four games into the season, and you continue to fight. You don't fight until the fat lady sings. <laughs> so you got to just keep it going, I guess. Uh, don't worry about the schedule. Just focus, hey, on the Steelers. And we heard this Broncos team say when things were going well, it's just one, about one going one and zero oh that week. And when it's not going well, you still have that same approach, right? Absolutely, absolutely. You just continue to go 1-0. Uh, that's the best you can do in this league. Every game is going to be hard. Every team is tough, no matter what their record is. But if you can go 1-0 and every week, you'll be pretty good. Okay, well, the Broncos going on the road now, looking to go 1-0 and this upcoming week uh, with the Steelers coming up next. All right, that's going to do it for us. For Todd Davis, I am Phil Milani. This has been the Broncos Postgame Show.